Hi, today I wanted to tell you about the Baby Jogger City Tour 2. It's one of 20 lightweight strollers that we purchased and tested and compared in a semi-scientific way. And we really like the Baby Jogger brand. This is the lightest weight of the Baby Jogger strollers. It's 14 pounds. And um, I just want to tell you a few things about it. It's priced around $249, which is great. The other ones that I have sitting here just to help compare a few things are the Butterfly Bugaboo, Baby Zen Yo-Yo 2, and the Bezrae Gravity Fold Stroller. And some of those are actually like $450. So this is actually a very good price compared to those. And it folds down pretty small, not quite as small as some, but really small and the weight is really good. There's a couple of pounds difference in some of these, but that's but it's hardly noticeable. So this is a really nice stroller from that perspective. So I just want to talk first of all about just some of the ease of use features for a parent and I'll start with the handle. The handle is 38 and a half inches high, which is pretty typical. Most of the strollers are in that range, like 38, 39, and that's measured to the base of the handle, not the top, but I'll just show you like the baby's in. Hopefully you can see this. The baby's in is a, a couple of inches higher and the other ones are um, almost exactly the same as this one. We also like that it's a rubber handle, has really nice grips. It just feels nice to hold on to and push. And um, <clears throat> and we like we like the way it feels. Now it's the frame is fairly firm, but there's just a little bit of wiggle right here in this joint where the silver folds, and just a very very slight amount in this joint down here. So. There's a little bit of that, but you, you wouldn't really notice it after you got used to the stroller. Um, the storage basket is actually pretty nice for this. So it's not the biggest storage basket, but it's so accessible. We're, it, it's a little deceiving. It has this mesh, but the mesh goes all the way down. So we're able to get a very big diaper bag in here, like overstuffed, and also just a regular backpack, but also really stuff backpack into this. Um, you can ex access it from the front as well, but you can only put small stuff in there because the hole is pretty small. Um, now just compare that to like the baby sin and you can see the baby sin's basket space, even my hand just barely fits across it. And we had a really hard time getting anything of any size in there. And it's accessible from the front too, but it has these bars. so. This is a comparison point. This has a really nice storage for the size and weight of the stroller. Now, on the downside, there's no other storage on the stroller. There's, there aren't any pockets anywhere. For example, on the, this Bezray Gravity Fold Stroller, we have this nice pocket with a, that closes with a magnet, which is really like super nice. And, um, and then the Baby Zen has a bucket like that zip close. So those are, are super handy for smaller items. Like you can stuff a diaper or some wipes in there or your phone or keys or whatever. Um, but this one doesn't have one, unfortunately. It's not alone. A lot of the strollers we, we compared do not have them. And you can buy parent organizers that hang on the handle that'll give you extra com storage compartments and so on. And even the generic ones work fine. So if you find one that's lower cost that you like better than some of the branded ones, that's gonna work for you okay as well. Now the other thing obviously from a parent use perspective is there are no cup holders. And even your $450 shoulders do not come with cup holders either for the parent or for the kid. Really sad, you would hope that if you're paying that much money you could at least get a cup holder. You can buy them separately. A few strollers like this one, the Bezre has it, the Zoe, Tour has it, um, which is awesome, um, but these strollers do not have that. Another thing uh, about this stroller is the brake, and I actually really like the brake in one way about this stroller. Like it's it's easy. There's only one brake that operates both wheels, and it's really easy to use. It's really comfortable, um, both pushing down and pulling up. And even when you have bare feet or sandaled feet, like it, it goes up pretty easy. So the only downside that I found on this brake is that every once in a while, unless you get it like all the way completely down, it, it can go like partially down and it makes you think it's, it's stuck. But then when it goes partially down, when you just push the stroller back and forth a little bit, the brake releases. So you just have to kind of be careful with that and make sure that that works, that that's fully engaged before you use it. Um, the 
Other thing um, on the, the wheels are there, there are front wheel locks. These little white lovers and the locks just keep the wheel pointed straight. So if you're going on really long walks and not very many curves, then, and you, you want to not be worrying about veering from side to side very much, then you can put the locks on. Now we actually did a veer test on all of these strollers and compared them apples to apples. And this stroller was among the, the best in terms of like actually continuing to go straight, like on a long straight path. So the wheel locks really shouldn't be needed, but, um, but they're there and that's kind of handy. So speaking of steering, I really love the steering of this stroller. It just like when we took it in our optics, obstacle test and when we've used it just on the street and in stores and things like that, um, it just turns very easily. And actually most of these strollers turn pretty well on flat surfaces. Um, there are a few that we tested that didn't do quite as well, but we really like the Baby Jagger. If, in terms of maneuverability, it does quite well. And, and it does great at jumping curves, doesn't take, we actually me measured the force of like pushing down on the strollers to see how much force they take. And the Baby Jogger did well in that test also. So um, from a parent usability perspective, Baby Jogger is pretty nice. It's missing some of those accessories that I mentioned to you. Now let's, let's talk about kid comfort a little bit. That's one of the main categories we score things in. And I'll start with uh, just the insides. Um, you can see this, the seat itself sits pretty upright. You know, a lot of these strollers are really disappointing. They have, even at their most upright position, they actually lean back and like the child's like they're in a recliner. And you can see a lot of times that the kids are trying kind of trying to lean forward because they want to sit upright to see or they're holding something and they, they can't really see it. So they're trying to lean forward, but this stroller doesn't have that problem. Actually, a lot of the strollers do have that problem. This one inclines at like 64 degrees. And if this is 90 and 64 back that way, and, um, and that's a pretty good number compared to everything else that we've looked at. It also does a pretty good job in its backwards recline. The reclining mechanism is pretty easy. You can do it with just one hand to make it go down. And it's called an infinite recline, so you can stop it along the way in many different positions. But in its fully reclined position, of course, it's not flat like a bassinet, but um, it's actually pretty far back. And then the extendable footrest is, is very nice. So all in all, you end up with a pretty nice napping surface um, for kids. So. I like that. Um, I would say that it ranks higher than a lot of these. Like the Baby's Inn doesn't, you have to buy a footrest separately. The Bugaboo has one that's um, that's also pretty nice, but it's, it's not um, like an extension of the seat. This feels very much like an extension of the seat and it's, and it's more comfortable from that perspective. So raising up the recline is not quite as easy. It takes two hands instead of just one. You have to pull on the, the straps and also pull on that. And then like when you actually have a kid in there, it's like, it's hard to do if they're not working with you, you know, so you gotta tell them to sit up while I'm doing this. Otherwise you're really fighting against them. But, um, but once you get it up, um, it stays there really well. In terms of kid comfort, the, the actual comfort of the seat, this, you know, if you're just in a store touching this, it feels fairly comfortable, although you can, I don't know if you can hear that, but you, there's that, this board in here that um, you can kind of feel through the back of the seat. So it's, it's not the thickest of all of the cushions. Like the Baby's Inn has wonderfully soft cushion and the Butterfly is super nice as well. And even the Bezray has like, it has really like a memory foam. And this feels a little bit like like a really bad memory foam, so it does have a little spring, but so that's not the best aspect of the Baby Jagger City Tour too. Um, the the buckles and straps should have talked about that with parent ease of use, but um, the buckles are like so so like um, the the hip and the shoulder clips stay together, which is fairly typical for these strollers. And they stay together pretty well and they come apart okay, but when they come apart, it's a little bit annoying to have to slide them back together. And they clip in okay, you know, like there's some 
extra holes that sometimes it's like a false start and then you have to slide it in. And then when you then releasing it, it's pretty simple. It's like, it doesn't take much pressure at all, which is nice. Um, so that's okay. And of course there's some padding on this and then on the shoulders, which really is kind of not very necessary really. Like the children typically aren't putting much pressure in a stroller on the shoulder area. Like, you know, on an infant car seat, it's really important for safety reasons to, for the, the shoulders to be padded and, um, and to be really strong. But for strollers, most of the time, the, um, the shoulder straps are only coming into play for smaller children to just to, to keep them safe and not fall out by leaning forward too much. But when your children get a little bit older, you probably won't be using the straps much at all for the shoulder, which obviously makes the clipping of the harness a little bit easier. Now, speaking of the harness, or rather the shoulder straps, they do have to be threaded in these slots and you do have to do that manually. So you have to undo this seat. It's a little more cumbersome than most strollers actually. There's there's the board back here you can see. Um, it's, I don't know about that. And you just have to reach your hand in to be able to re-thread it. So the good news is, I mean, even though it's a little bit annoying to have to do that um, in contrast to, to some like the, uh, the butterfly, you, you just actually slide these things up and down like that and done. So this takes more time, but honestly, you're not gonna be doing this very often unless you're switching sizes of children back and forth in this thing. Um, so it's not that big of a downside, but still in comparison, it's not as easy to some of the other ones. And then the clips themselves suggest fairly easily you know if you're like an expert on backpacks and adjusting straps and clips and you don't have any problem with these not the easiest but not too bad either so um it's not really size for bigger kids i mean officially it's like i think 45 pounds and 40 inches and we measure all of the seats both the depths of the seats and the height this one happens to be 16 and a half inches and just Compare that to like one of the, the tallest seats that we found is this butterfly, which is like 22 inches. Um, so it's not gonna be made for bigger kids. If you, know, if you really wanna push it and use it for your older kids or your taller kids, if they're like just happen to be really tall, then uh, this may not be the best stroller for them. Uh, so just that's one more thing to keep in mind. Um, let's talk canopies. The canopy, is um, decent, but it doesn't extend as far as many of the other shoulders. Like the Bezre, you can see this canopy goes all the way down to the, the bumper bar. And also the, you know, the baby's end is pretty similar to the baby jogger in terms of how far it extends and the coverage it provides. Bugaboo is another one that has like super extended canopy. So obviously when canopies are down, and kids can't see out and that's just that's just the trade-off that's always going to be the case um another thing about the canopy is the peekaboo window and there is a nice peekaboo window here unfortunately it's connected with velcro so it's a little bit loud if your baby's sleeping then you know you're going to be a little bit hesitant to, to open that up compared to for example like the Desiree, where it also has just like super slick magnet you can't even hear that. Oops, I guess you can hear it when you put it back. Um, so it would be nice if the canopy would extend a little bit farther and it would be nice if the this wasn't Velcro attached, but um, the, the window itself is adequate size. It's not like great big. It's not gonna provide extra ventilation to the child inside, but it's big enough to do its job as a peekaboo window. So uh, I, I talked about steering earlier and told you it steers really well and, and it works good on flat surfaces. However, it doesn't work good off-road. The wheels are five inches. They're not, they're not the best wheels for off-road. Honestly, none of the lightweight strollers we tested except for like some of the, the ones with bigger three-wheelers like the Baby Jogger City Mini GT2, the Bridge XB Lively, they have some bigger wheels. They actually do a little bit better off-road. Um, none of them do great off-road and this one definitely does not do great off-road or with like significant bumps or cobblestone or stuff like that. So you're going to be, want to have to be, be careful about that. 
Um, we did do some other kind of unique tests. For example, we, we measured the, the ride smoothness of the strollers by putting a device in all of them and, and pushing them along the same route. And this is actually came in about the middle in ride smooth. This is not the smoothest ride. It doesn't have spring suspension, which may have made a difference. On the other hand, this was actually like the third quietest stroller out of 20 that we tested. We measured average decibel levels and you know, some strollers are just loud going even when they shouldn't be loud when they're not going on a bumpy place or whatever. One thing that we checked for in all the strollers is pinch points because um, pinching and even amputation has been a thing that's been a problem with strollers in the past. And, um, and most strollers are built where that doesn't happen very much. So you can see like there are pretty big gaps these days in the strollers. But even so, we found a few areas where you can get pinched when you're, particularly when you're closing this. And we did not find any pinch points um, in, the, um, in the canopy process. So you don't have to worry about that too much, but you wanna keep your children separated from the stroller when you're folding it, because there are a few pinch points. And, and we did test a few strollers where there are almost no pinch points. So I wanted to talk to you about folding. Um, this stroller is designed really well in terms of folding. Uh, in practice, it isn't the, the most smooth. It takes us, you know, if you're like honest with your measurement, it takes us four or five seconds to fold and unfold it, but it folds just with a slide button. So you have to push this button with your thumb and then pull the big button to actually fold it. And it's called a tri-fold stroller. And you saw me fold, fold it earlier, but it goes down like this and it, it can be done with one hand very easily. So it's definitely a one hand stroller. And then once you get it down part way, then it should just kind of fold forward. But notice I had to use my other hand. And then it folds in three different sections, as you see. Um, so one of the problems is like the bottom section, well, here's another problem that just showed itself, but a lot of times when I fold this stroller, almost every time I think the footrest comes out, which is kind of annoying because then it doesn't lay flat. So you have to put that back, but um, when it's folded, it lays down like that. And then there's a latch that keeps it folded, which is very typical for all of these strollers. And to unfold it, you know, you just raise the latch. But the problem with this one is that this top third, if it's laying like this and you just pick it up by this, this part opens, but the other part doesn't because it's slashed. And actually this part, you would, don't want to open. You'd prefer that that just stay together better so that you could like pick it up sometimes. So that's one of the complaints that I have about it. But the unfold process is fairly simple. You're just unlatching with one hand just to get it separated a little bit. And then you can just kind of snap it open and um, that works pretty well. Some, there's, sometimes I feel like I have to, uh, in, like, especially when I'm trying to get it closed and collapsed, I have to kind of push on it or pull on it a little bit. And sometimes that's a challenge when I'm using just one hand and I like have my grandkid in my other arm. And so I, we didn't rank it the highest in folding, although it's certainly better than those that require two hands. And, um, and we like the, the third mechanism. Now, I just want to tell you about the size a little bit. We'll fold it back again so you can kind of see this. But um, it folds to a pretty compact level, and it, actually you can get it to stand up if the wheels are pointed in the right direction. Um, so it's, it's pretty small. And I have my handy dandy airport baggage carry-on bag sizer right here, just so you guys can see how it compares to the typical airline size. This is 22 by nine by 14 inches. And there are a few airlines domestically in the US that have slightly bigger ones. So you can you always need to check, but um, this one doesn't quite fit. Inside of this, it's just a bit too wide. Um, thickness wise, it actually does fit pretty well. So, and height wise, it also, fits pretty well. I mean, it's just barely, it's like right at the height requirement. So it's pretty close. Um, and honestly, 
when you when you show it to the um, airline folks, they may let you carry it on and put it in the bin. Um, many people have successfully put it in bins, even in airlines that go strictly by that size. And that that is the typical size for like Air for um, Delta and American. Um, you know, Southwest has a little bit bigger one. So, and just let me just show you a little a quick comparison of the size of a couple of these. Um, this so Bagaboo has a similar mechanism. Um, that leg rest, I'm just folding the leg rest to get it out of the way. But when the Bugaboo is folded, it's uh, it's pretty similar in size, as you can see. It's just a little bit smaller. The Bugaboo really need to like clip this thing when you fold it so it doesn't look funny like that. But anyway, uh, Bugaboo is like like this. So the Bugaboo also doesn't quite fit in the baggage size guide. And once again, uh, even though it doesn't quite fit, like a lot of people have successfully carried it onto planes. I have not done that yet. I haven't tried it. But in general, the Bugaboo's folding mechanism is a lot smoother. And of course the baby Zen is a real pain to fold. Even after you've practiced it a lot, it's just like, it's challenging to fold. So. I like the uh, the Baby Jogger City Tour too in terms of folding and unfolding, and I especially like the unfolding works really well. Uh, so I think I covered the main things about this stroller, and happy to hear your comments and feedback. Um, I'll be comparing it to these other strollers, and we actually have 20 of them, so there's a lot of material yet to come. Thank you.